All right, welcome back, guys. So we're on to the last part of my section of the tutorial, um, which is setting up uh, a network interface. So um, lately, it's been a, a little weird with Unity. They used to have this built-in um, uh, networking library um, that has now been deprecated in the new versions. Uh, and they're saying that they're working on something new. Um, but in the meantime, we're left with two networking options. Um, so our choices right now are either to use a library called Photon, um, which is a cloud-based networking service. Um, so the pros of that are that um, it's pretty easy to set up. There's not really too much that you have to do with scripts. Uh, most of it is just linking objects to one another in the um, scene view. Um, so that's nice, um, but of course the drawback is that it is cloud-based, so it does come with kind of a higher latency. Um, so for a lot of VR, uh, VR or AR apps, um, it's not quite what you want. Um, so for the purposes of this tutorial, uh, we're just going to set up a very, very basic client and server in uh, .NET sockets and C Sharp. Um, so the pros to this uh, approach is that it will be much, much quicker since it's running on our local machine um, instead of connecting to the cloud. Uh, but the cons are that, of course, uh, no one likes network programming, um, so it will be a little tedious to program this part. Um, I encourage you guys following along to go ahead and open up the scripts folder in the project view. Um, there should be two scripts in there, one called basicserver.cs and the other called basicclient.cs. Um, I'm not going to walk you guys through uh, hand coding each of this line by line, but I will pull up the scripts and explain the key features to you. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing we're going to want to do is make sure that our Unity scene is ready for a network implementation. Um, you know, sometimes this is necessary, sometimes it's not. It just depends on your application that you're um, that you're developing here. Uh, for the purposes of our tutorial, we're imagining that we're using this Unity editor uh, on a server laptop or a server desktop uh, computer, and that there is a client somewhere who's interacting with this virtual human on a HoloLens or on a, a, another AR HMD. Um, so they're seeing the uh, virtual human um, on the AR HMD, and then we, behind the scenes, are controlling its actions um, through our GUI that we just set up over the course of the last couple sections. Um, so when we have something like that, we do need to set up separate scenes in Unity. Um, so first thing we want to do is go ahead and add a new component. So click in the hierarchy, right click, and then select Create Empty. Um, go ahead and click the game object that it just made and we'll rename that to Network Manager. Basically this object is just going to be a container for our scripts. Um, so now go ahead and click into the Project tab, open the Scripts folder, and if you scroll down to the B section you will see one that says Basic Client, another that says Basic Server. Um, so go ahead and drag those into place. Um, we are going to save two different scenes from this. Um, that way we have one scene for our client and one scene for our server. Um, so let's start out with our client side. Um, to do this, we'll go over to the right in the inspector window, and we're going to uncheck that server icon. That way we have uh, just only the client code running in the scene and we don't want both in the same scene so then we go up here we'll hit save as uh, go into our scripts folder and we are going to save this as um, i'm going to do mine as uh, tut client tutorial client and we'll save um, so now the next thing to consider here is that since this is going to be running on our client which uh, we are imagining is on a hololens um, we are not going to want that GUI hanging out in our um, user's face. Um, so we want to click up here to the canvas, and we want to go ahead and deactivate that. And then go ahead and hit save. Um, so easy enough. Uh, we'll go ahead and click the network manager again. Uh, and in that basic client section, you'll see that we have all of these blank sections. 
um, all of these need to be linked to that Remy object. So just go ahead and grab Remy from the hierarchy, drag them back over here for all four. You gotta, gotta land them in the tiny slots, otherwise it doesn't count. Uh, so we get all four. Don't worry about the server IP address. We didn't actually end up using that variable. Um, so that should be it. Um, go ahead and hit save. Uh, and now we need to set up our server scene as well. Um, so this time what we're going to do is uh, go ahead and hit uh, file. Uh, actually, let's do it this way. Hit scenes in the project view and then go back to whatever that scene was we were just working in. Um, for me, it is the not tut client. Uh, for me, I named it start gestures because this is the same scene I've been working in since the gesture part of the tutorial. Uh, go ahead and hit network manager. This time we're going to uncheck client. We'll check basic server in the components. And then we're going to hit file, save as. Make sure you navigate to the scenes directory. And this time I am naming it tut server. Um, so now we have a server scene and a client scene. And the client scene has our client, uh, our client network code and it has, the, um, uh, it has the GUI turned off. And then our server scene has the server code running, but it does have that uh, GUI present. Um, so I'm going to walk you, uh, walk you through what to do next here in just a second. Um, now there's just a couple last things we need to do. Um, so navigate back to your server scene, tut server or whatever you called it. Uh, go ahead and hit the network manager and we see that our basic server is checked. Uh, this is good. Uh, next thing we need to do is set up a couple things on the GUI. Um, so let's go open the canvas. Uh, go ahead and hit the triangle by the canvas. Um, walk, uh, go all the way down here to the walk button and look in the inspector window here. Uh, down at the bottom, we'll see our on-click event that we have linked to uh, run that, um, that code in the locomotion script. Uh, what we want to do is go ahead and hit a plus. We're going to add another thing. Uh, this time, instead of dragging the Remy object, we're going to go ahead and drag that network object that down there into the blank. Uh, and then we'll go into the drop-down list. Uh, we'll hit basic server and we're going to hit send agent command. Um, and we'll open up the script here in just a minute. That way you guys have an idea on what exactly this is doing. Um, but once you open this up, we're going to want to send a keyword from our server to the client um, to tell it to go ahead and start this walking animation. Um, so in the slides, I have all of the keywords laid out here. Um, or say hello, say how are you, say intro, smile, greet, frown, wave, and walk. Um, these do need to spell. Uh, these do need to be spelled exactly correctly uh, with uh, capitalization for them to work, unless you go into the server or client code and modify them for your own uses. Um, so for the walk command, uh, it's as easy as typing walk with a capital W. Uh, so that's good. Uh, we'll hop up here to wave. Uh, we'll go ahead and do the same thing. We hit the plus, uh, we drag the network manager to the object, go to basic server, send agent command, and then the wave command is just wave with a capital W again. Uh, we go up here to frown slider. Um, frown slider is just frown, so we'll hit plus, connect the network manager, hit basic server, send agent command, Brown with an N, um, so that's good. And we go ahead and keep going. Uh, the greet button is next, so uh, again, go ahead and hit plus. Uh, link the network manager. Go ahead and go down to basic server, send agent command. This one is going to be just greet, capital G. Go up to two smile. Same thing again, plus network manager, basic server, send agent command. And this one is smile, capital S, intro. Again, link your network manager. We just go through every single one of these the same exact way. 
the only thing we're changing are these keywords this one is say intro capital S capital I no space how are you same thing link the network manager basic server send agent command this one's going to be say how are you uh, capitals for each word no spaces and last one is say hello so go ahead and link the network manager hit the drop down box uh, hit uh, send agent command and this last one is say hello capital S capital H no space uh, go ahead and hit save uh, and that should be all set um, so before we continue on and do any testing uh, we do want to go ahead and walk through part of the scripts that way you guys uh, can see uh, what's going on behind the scenes uh, in that uh, basic client and basic server so I've got the client pulled up I need the server here um, these scripts are located in the uh, assets slash scripts directory um, so we have two very easy um, I mean somewhat technical um, C-sharp socket scripts. Uh, let's look at basic server first. Um, so what this one does uh, is it sets up a, uh, a listener socket um, and it lets the client uh, connect to this listener socket uh, and then it receives a link to the client socket to send information. Um, so we have two sockets that are um, created through here. Um, most of this is uh, pretty much copied and pasted from the Microsoft documentation uh, on basic server setup. Um, so um, pretty much all of the uh, not these uh, all of these variables, the network variables, are cut and paste. Messaging variables are a little bit different, just because uh, we have um, uh, just custom messages that we're sending. But uh, really, everything is pretty much the same. Um, so let's go down here to the meat of the code. When we start, uh, we go ahead and start a new thread uh, based on a function called server code. Um, this makes the server code run on its own thread so it's not holding up our Unity execution. Um, and when this begins, it, go ahead, it goes ahead and gathers our uh, local IP information and sets up a new server on the port 6566. Um, it's a TCP connection, TCP IP, um, so it will go through this uh, try logic to try and bind to the local endpoint. Uh, it's going to listen for any one connection. Right now this is a very, very basic server. It will only accept one connection and it will not correct from a disconnect. If something disconnects, you have to completely reset everything. Uh, I am not a network programmer, so this is not my forte. Um, so after this, it sets up a buffer um, for to send messages called bytes, uh, and then we get to the main loop of the program. So if the server server is sending something, um, it's going to log in Unity that it's attempting to send a server command to the client. Um, it's going to take a message and it is going to um, uh, encode it into U uh, UTF-8 encoding. Um, and then it will uh, go ahead and send across. Um, so that client sock that send is the meat of the um, message uh, of the messaging. Um, there's one other thing to mention, and that's that we have um, two queues in place. We have an action queue and an OBS queue. Um, basically, um, every time one of the Unity scripts. Um, is trying to send a command over the network. For instance, if we press the walk button, like we just set up, it's going to call that um, um, that send agent message function, send agent command, which is down here, um, with a string um, argument. So we put that string into the OBS queue, and then we set the server sending flag to be true. Um, and then eventually this, uh, this logic inside the thread will be triggered. It will convert that string into the UTF-8 format and send it across the network. Uh, meanwhile, the client's doing something a little different, so we'll hop over there here in just a second. Um, everything else in this file is just very straightforward. Um, um, you know, closing the socket, 
when Unity is about to exit for the undisable function. Um, shutdown connection, uh, same thing. It's just uh, basic uh, um, shutdown procedures. Um, the update function, um, it looks like I added that in for a debugging purpose. We're not actually using this anymore though, so you don't even need the update function in yours. Um, hopping over to the basic client side of things, you'll see it's set up pretty much exactly the same manner, cut and paste. Um, only thing is that uh, we have these links to our public variables like we set up earlier in this part of the tutorial. Um, so same thing as the um, server, uh, in the start function we go ahead and set up a new thread based on a client function. Uh, so this client function, client code, will be run in a separate flag from the uh, regular Unity application, that way it doesn't hold everything up when it's waiting for a message. Um, again, it has the same kind of network setup here, and then it jumps into its main loop, uh, which is an infinite loop. Um, from here, we are constantly pulling for, uh, for messages from the server. Um, so it's just going to see if there's anything from the server. We're going to receive any bytes that the server is sending. Uh, it does a sanity check to make sure we're not getting anything super large. Um, and then it, re, uh, it decodes from UTF-8 back into a regular string. Um, and then from here we do a debug message just to keep ourselves sane and see what the message was. It should be one of those keywords that we have on the left side of the screen here. Um, and then finally down here in the update function, one more thing before we hop down there. Um, a similar queue is here in the um, client side called action queue. So we add that uh, command that we received from the server into this queue, and then the update function later is going to examine this queue to see if there's any commands that need to be addressed. Um, it's going to um, parse it, figure out which command it is that we are uh, looking at, uh, and then it's got going to call the appropriate script to trigger the logic that we already coded for that. Um, after it's done that, it, go ahead, it, it goes ahead and pops that command from the queue. Um, so very straightforward, um, although it is a little intimidating looking at the network code if you have never done, dealt with that before. Um, so at this point, um, you have a pretty good idea on uh, everything that's going on behind the scenes in the network code. We've set everything up in Unity. Uh, there's just a couple last steps to actually get this to work. Um, so typically you can't open two Unity editor windows at the same time and have them network together. So that means we have to build one or the other of our scenes. So what we're going to do here is go ahead and make sure our server scene is still open and is saved. Then go to File, Build Settings, um, and then your project, if you downloaded our, our demo project, will have a different scene up here. Uh, so go ahead and right click uh, and it will let you remove selection. And then you want to hit Add Open Scenes that will add the server scene into our build. Um, we don't need to change any of the settings down here. It should automatically be in PC, Mac, and Linux standalone. Um, so what we did do is just go ahead and hit Build. Um, it will have you choose a directory. Um, so go ahead and uh, you can create a new directory. Just name it something like server or server tut. Um, go ahead and select that folder and it should start to build automatically. Okay, so we've built our server. Uh, hopefully that succeeded. You shouldn't see any error messages there. Um, next, what we want to do is go ahead and navigate in your folder to that directory that you just created uh, before you hit that build button. When you open that up, there's going to be a .exe file with the Unity logo uh, attached to it. So go ahead and double click that, and it's going to run our server, and it should appear uh, somewhat like it does in the top left corner of my screen here. Um, so you should see our GUI, and you should see our Remy character there. Um, now there's a, one last thing we need to do to test this. Um, so what we want to do is uh, switch back to our um, client scene. So go ahead and open that uh, tut client scene or which, uh, whatever you named it. Uh, that should be fine. Um, when you get here, 
um, and hit play. Good. Um, so if you have your console open, you should see a message that says client connected to remote endpoint. Um, since this is the first time for you guys running this on your own systems, you'll probably get that Windows pop-up notification that asks you um, to allow network access for Unity. So go ahead and click yes. Um, and now it does appear as though our client and server are connected, at least here on my end. So if, for instance, I hit the wave button on the server, we see him wave on the server and in the client. Uh, if we hit that walk button over there on the server, again, we see him walk all the way back to his point and back here on the client. Um, so it's perfect. Everything worked out just how we wanted it to. Um, so we set up these custom server, custom client. Uh, you guys can feel free to use this code um, you know, however you want. Mingle it for your own applications. Uh, we don't particularly care. Um, so if you do need to set up your own custom server, feel free to use it as a jumping off point. Um, at this point, uh, that concludes my tutorial sections. Um, so if you guys have any questions, I will be in the chat. Uh, and you can feel free to email me. Um, and then we're going to pass it over to Kang Su for the next section. He is going to go over the um, Arduino setup uh, and getting our agents to respond to uh, you know, physical uh, senses. So uh, we will be back in just a few minutes.